Psalm 42. For the director of music, a muscle of the sons of Korah. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan to the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep. In the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony, and my foes, foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, Where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. This is the word of the Lord. Well, Happy New Year, or is it? How are you feeling at the beginning of 2020? The person who wrote this psalm wasn't feeling very good at all, were they? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? See, Psalm 42, and it's actually Psalm 43 as well, we're just focusing on Psalm 42, but really it's one whole psalm. It's a prayer for when God seems distant, when you feel God has forgotten about you and your circumstances. It's a prayer when you feel sad or depressed or you've been totally overwhelmed by your circumstances in life. And to make things worse, you might be experiencing the persistent ridicule from friends or family or a work colleague saying, hey, I thought you were a Christian. I thought your God was supposed to look after you. Where's your God? And why is he letting you go through times like this? See, we tend to want to focus on the happy times and just sing the uplifting songs. And it's right and good to do that. We've got plenty to sing about. But we don't often have time for the more downbeat laments. Even though all of us go through the down times in life. So it's good to acknowledge them, and it's good to actually spend time thinking about them. In the good times, normally we just carry on and have a good time, party on. But when life gets tough, actually that's a great blessing from God, because it's at those times when we actually stop and start to think a lot more deeply. And that's what a mascal is. It is... A poem, a song, a lament to help us have wisdom, to get us to stop and think very deeply, but also to live wisely. So at the beginning of a new year, this psalm is going to teach us two things to help us respond to our circumstances wisely in 2020. Psalm 42 is going to help us to speak to God honestly about our feelings, but then also we're going to speak to ourselves about God. Now please note that Psalm 42 is not just a five-second remedy um, to cure your troubles. It's going to begin to help us to form good habits of speaking to God honestly and then speaking to ourselves about God 
But my job this morning is not to take you out of your sadness or depression or your melancholy, but it is to equip you with God's word to walk with God through any circumstance you may face this year. We can speak honestly to God about our feelings and we can remind ourselves of our trustworthy God from his word. I read this psalm, Psalm 42, with an elderly Christian lady uh, who was in absolute despair in Bournemouth Hospital uh, some years ago. And one day she was full of tears and God was distant and she just wanted to end it all. She didn't want to carry on. The next day I went back and she was sitting up, perky, eating her, eating her breakfast and saying, you know, in the night I put my trust in God again. I remembered that my God is close to me hasn't left me, hasn't forsaken me. Overnight, a change because God's word brought comfort. I read this psalm also with a man last year. And we reread the psalm. And the following week, we reread the psalm. And the person said to me, look, we've read it before. I know the facts, but I'm just not feeling it but actually I know the truths that it's speaking about. He is someone who was not going to be overwhelmed by their feelings, even though they were very much struggling with their feelings for a very, very long time. See, Psalm 42 tells us that God is not surprised that even Christians experience downcast days. And we might feel surprised about that. We might feel a a little bit... Uh, anxious that, oh, well, as a Christian, am I allowed to feel a little bit down? God isn't surprised. And he gives us psalms like this so we have words to speak to God about how we're feeling. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. Let's look at the person in the psalm and see uh, how they're feeling and what they do about it. This person is uh, feeling far from God and they're feeling cut off from the people of God. But notice, they're still speaking to God. See, we don't have to have it all together before we can approach God in prayer. We can be honest with God about how we are feeling. And God knows how we're feeling even before we've spoken to him. Uh, This person is in the far north of the country. Verse 6, they're on Mount Mizar. It's miles away from Jerusalem, where in Old Testament times they went to meet with God and God's people in the temple. The psalmist is physically distant from God in Jerusalem, but they're also feeling spiritually distant too. Verse 1, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? This person's saying they're in a spiritual drought. Verse 1 and 2, it's a picture of the deer staggering across the drought-stricken land, you know, their tongue hanging out looking for any sign of water, probably lions lurching in the background, ready to pounce. And you can almost hear David Attenborough's voiceover, the deer pants for streams of water, but does not experience any refreshment, and there are no rain clouds on the horizon. Sorry, that's the best I could do. (laughs) It's a deer in the desert, a dry mouth thirst. That's what this person is feeling like spiritually, They're saying, I'm dry. I need refreshing water. I need you, God. Verse 2, my soul thirsts for the living God. Where can I go? They're longing to be in a better place. This is a good, godly prayer for God's people to pray when you're feeling like that. Tell God how you are feeling. And so the psalmist continues. He says uh, their water source is coming from only one place. Do you see that there in verse 3? 
their own tears. That's all they have to quench their thirst. This person cannot stop crying. And if you live in the real world, there will be sad experiences. It is normal to get sad. We've got to reject the airbrushed Facebook lifestyle that says we must be happy all the time. And this type of thinking affects churches as well. See, some churches want people to be happy all the time. And if you aren't happy, then there must be something wrong with your faith. But these words have been written for us to know that it is okay to be honest with God when you feel distant from him. See, we are given words to describe our soul to God, honestly. And then God tells us, to speak to our own souls about his promises. So this year, make it a year where you see clearly that you can speak to your God honestly about how you are. And make it a year where you read his word to remind you of how secure you are in him. Now, why can't this person get back to Jerusalem? Well, we don't know. Are they sick? Are they in hiding? Has the border been closed? They don't have a visa? Are they in exile? Are they in prison? Well, we're not told. And to add insult to injury, the, this person, the people around this person are mocking him. Verse 3, people say to me all day long, where is your God? They'd be saying things like, well, it doesn't seem that doesn't seem like God's on your side at the moment. I thought God loved you. I thought he would care for you, help you. It just looks like he's forgotten you. Why don't you forget him? Have you ever felt like you've been in a spiritual desert? A spiritual drought? Have you had to put up with ridicule? Work colleagues? Family or friends? Because you continue to trust your God, even when he might appear to be distant. A Christian friend of mine lost their house to a fire, not in the recent uh, uh, bushfires, uh, but they were going through it tough physically and spiritually. And uh, neighbours actually said to them, well, I thought your God loved you and looked after you. Well, why did he let your house get toasted? See, my friend knew that he wasn't immune from the experiences of life and he still had to grapple with uh, feeling distant from God and face the ridicule of people around him. But actually he continued to decide to trust, to put his trust and hope in his God. And so this psalmist, he casts his mind back to a better time when he was joyfully praising God. In verse 4, he's longing to get back to the good times. Verse 4, these things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. See, he was a son of Korah. He was a musician in the temple in Jerusalem. He was in the church band. He was leading worship, telling people to rejoice in God, their saviour. See, the same God now feels distant from him. But he knows he can, God can satisfy him, refresh him. He's experienced that before. But even remembering the good times in the past doesn't seem to quite do the trick in the present to break the spiritual drought. So he's spoken to God about how he's feeling But now he turns, in verse 5, to speak to himself about God. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. See, this person is not afraid to tell God how he's feeling. He is honest with God. It is really okay to be honest with God. Is that message coming through in Psalm 42? You can be honest with your God. 
But then, speak to yourself about God. Don't let your feelings run away with you. Speak truth about God to yourself. See, the God who feels distant uh, from uh, this person is still addressed as my God and my Savior. This psalmist is emotionally at sea, but he is anchored to the rock he calls his God. See, our God is always with us. Emmanuel, God with us. See, life is a spiritual battle. Some days will be full of faith, but the next day will be worried by fears. And so this person in verse 7 feels overwhelmed again. They're longing to drink clear spiritual water from God, but instead they can only see chaos, the chaos of the ocean waves. And they say, I'm drowning spiritually. Waves are breaking over me. I'm in deep water. It feels like life is like a deafening roar of a waterfall crashing all around me, crashing all over me. It's totally confusing. But yet even in the midst of that confusion, this person finds comfort. See that in verse 8? By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me. This person lies down on their bed at night and they trust God. They fall asleep, but in the middle of the night they wake up and they can feel anxieties starting to rise up within them. And so what do they do? They remember one of the songs they sung with God's people in worship. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. Or they remember a scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And as the anxieties in the middle of the night start to rise, they are squashed by God's word and God's song. What a great blessing it is to have those at hand in the middle of the night, in your circumstances, if fears start to rise. See, this person can't fully understand what is going on, but he can understand that God is creator, he is sovereign, he is lovingly in control of all things, and that even though he can't understand exactly what's going on, it is part of God's big plan for their life. But then in the morning, uh, the circumstances uh, become reality again. And this, pe- this person is in that spiritual battle. They're wrestling. And in verse 9, they say, Why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony, as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, Where is your God? They're back in that dark place. The psalmist is confused, they're in agony, they're being taunted. It feels like God has abandoned them again. But did you notice? Notice how this psalmist addresses God. Verse 9, I say to God, my rock. Not just any old rock, but my personal rock. The rock on which I have decided to build my life. Not on sinking sand, but on Christ, the solid rock, the immovable rock. I'm going to keep on speaking honestly to God. I know he is a rock. I don't know why things are happening, what's going on, but I am going to speak to the one who I know is in control. See, this is good, honest prayer, grounded on God's character and promises to him. Verse 9 gives us permission to speak to God like this, to ask him direct questions. This year, make it a year where you speak honestly to God in prayer, but make it a year that you open God's word and find wonderful promises of comfort and love 
as he speaks to your soul. But if you're still feeling a little bit reluctant to speak to God as honestly as this psalmist does, remember that Jesus has already spoken to his heavenly Father honestly like this. In the Psalms, Jesus sings and prays all the Psalms before we do, but then he also sings these Psalms with us. So think about how Jesus spoke to his Father in the Garden of Gethsemane, as tears and his sweated blood, downcast. Why so disturbed within me, my soul? He's praying to God, his rock. And then Jesus on the cross, his bones are in agony. He's feeling abandoned. People are walking past him and ridiculing him. He said, you saved others, but you cannot save yourself. Where is your God? Then Jesus says to himself, I thirst. And there on the cross he dies in order to quench our spiritual thirst with a fount of living water. Remember Jesus said to the Samaritan woman when she asked him for a drink, Jesus said, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. This year, be honest with God about how you are feeling. But this year, speak to your soul about the life-giving water that he offers in his word. Keep your Bible open. Get your Bible reading plan ready. Start the day by feeding your soul with great truths of comfort and joy and love from God, your rock. You might be in a spiritual desert and feeling dry, promise is you will yet praise your God. It might not happen today. It might not happen tomorrow. It might be months away. But the promise is you will yet praise him, our Savior and our God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, our prayer as we begin this new year is that it will be a year in which we learn to speak to you honestly about how we are feeling, but also a year where we let you you speak your life-changing promises into our life from your word and that we are grown in love and obedience and we will yet praise you, our Saviour and our God. Amen.